All right, so this hole is for a later model <laughs> transaxle. It's for the uh, backup sensor. Um, so I'm gonna take a, a bolt, a short bolt, uh, with a brass washer on it and some uh, aviation protex as well, and put it in there to block it off because I don't, I'm not gonna hook this stuff up. <clears throat> All right, next I'm gonna uh, lube everything up. I've gotta stick the, uh, the arm back in there that controls the, uh, the gear selection. But I'm going to lube this sucker up with uh, some assembly lube um, and it's going to go inside of the middle one. Oh. It's going to go inside the middle one. If I can get it inside the middle one. Alright, so it's going to go inside the, the middle arm. There's a top, middle, and bottom. Stick in the middle one. Um, also too, make sure you lube up right here um, that's gonna help prevent anything from getting inside the transmission oil again this is what I'm using yes I know and then I'm gonna take uh, and put aviation permatex on my gasket um, right here and put it on put the nose cone on just make sure you follow I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's exactly how the gasket should go right there. All right. All right, so I've got my gasket all lubed up. Um, like I said, I mean, there's only one way this dang thing will go in here, but make sure you got that uh, little oil galley. This is your right place. Um, I've got my uh, nose cone uh, with my gear in there, lubed up a little gasket thing with a pain in the butt but I'm going to put the arm like I said in the middle and I've got everything all lubed uh, let's see I put that guy in the middle and now I'm going to put oh all right there you go and then uh, you got all your nuts and washers put them on there so, uh, my research uh, told me 11 foot pounds on those. Uh, um, so, now we're going to put our uh, mount on. So, this guy's going to go on here like this. They got a washer and a uh, nut to go on that side. Also, don't forget to put your grounding strap on there. I'm going to get a new one put right now. I don't have. Uh, one on me. I just cleaned this and went up for temporary. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the one nut onto this starter and just make it easier. All right, I'll push this thing back. <sighs> Got our nose cone on. It's torqued. Got a ground strap on. All right, let's see. So I don't have. I have my axis on, obviously, so it should fit straight up through it. Should, keyword. The one thing you want to make sure you do is feed that uh, clutch cable through. And be careful not to let all tension out of it. That way it doesn't. Uh, what you call it? release from the clutch and to pull that clutch assembly out that would really suck so all right so this is what i was talking about you gotta make sure you feed this clutch cable in but don't like don't push that cable forward um but just keep going slowly all right Table off. Bring the sucker back. Put that the shifter uh, hockey puck. Make sure you put that thing in the hole. And make sure you're, I've got the boot, the rubber boot already in. Not really a one-man 
simple task, it's doable. <sighs> Did not find a torque for these. But I would say at least freaking uh, 20, 25 foot pounds. That's my opinion though. And don't forget the strap, the grinding strap. It's kind of important. All right, so I've torqued uh, these main bolts down. I ended up going with the uh, standard size. I just cleaned it up and painted it. But I torqued those to 165 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to take my mounts and put them in. All right, so I ended up having to take uh, the bracket off. Um, put, put the rubber mounts on there before you start uh, tightening this sucker down. So... Uh, I snug these up, you know, all eight of them, and uh, yeah. Um, but real quick, this is the parts we have. I uh, clean this puppy up. It is used, but it's in good condition. Uh, but you're gonna put that in. Then I feel like these are called fulcrum plates. Um, you put that in. You're gonna put your axle in. And then you're gonna put this ring in. It's keyed. Um, probably gonna put the shiny end in. And then something else I want to point out. <clears throat> so these uh, fulcrum plates. Hopefully I'm calling the right thing. They're gonna go in there, uh, rounded side towards the outside of each one. Um, but they're kind of a pain. So one way to do it, I've seen, is you put uh, some grease on there. So this is a, some uh, assembly. Lube. Don't get too crazy with it, but just enough to kind of keep them in place. So, all right, so I've, I pushed it in. I've got my uh, fulcrum plates, you know, pushed up. I think also, too, the having them vertical is, is kind of going to help me out as well. <clears throat> um, I've lubed it up with some a little bit of oil. Just kind of, I don't know, I think it's a good idea. Um, but here's where the tricky part is going to come in. So hopefully this goes well. I'm gonna put our axle in. All right, I'm gonna finagle this a little bit, but you guys get the point. All right, finally got her in there. Um, now, like I said, we're going to put our <sighs> keyed washer, if you will in there. Um, I'm going to put the shiny side in. I slip this over the axle. Alright, there we go. Alright, she's in the key. Alright, so if it is possible, I'm going to have to cinch it down. All right, so um, had to buy some new snap ring pliers, but it worked out. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure you have some skinny uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, that'll definitely help out. I kind of boogered up the little uh, cone here. It's fine. But um, so, you know, you just make sure that uh, snap ring uh, is in there. Uh, maybe take the, the tip of the snap ring pliers and give it a turn. I need to do that myself. But she's in there. Um, you know, obviously the ring's in there. The axle's not coming out. And now we're going to put our... Where'd he go? This little guy on here. And then we're going to put the axle tube on top of it. Uh, but when we do that, um, I'm going to tighten down. You're going to snug up the, the nuts for the axle tube uh, portion right here. Um, you want a little bit of resistance when you're moving up and down, not too much. Uh, and you can, you know, get more resistance by using less gaskets and less resistance by using more gaskets. Uh, hopefully I have enough. I would definitely suggest buying more gaskets than what you need, maybe two gasket kits. 
I'm sure they're not too expensive. I don't remember how much mine was, but um, that way if you need need to, you have enough. Uh, so hopefully I have enough. If I don't, it's going to be a bad day. So, all right. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this little plastic piece here. I'm going to try to make sure that uh, snap rings seated all the way though. So I'll show you what this looks like. It's pretty straightforward. But it's going to go on here like this. Uh, pretty simplistic. I threw a little bit of oil on there just to kind of help um, friction. So, um, but I've got three gaskets on there. The gaskets are also uh, kind of acting as spacers. Uh, when I put the axle tube on, um, I'm going to fill and see how much play there is. You want a little bit of drag, but not too much drag. All right, now I'm going to put this boot on. I'm going to take a break from the other stuff. Um, but you want your your slit, your opening, to either be at the back or the front. Uh, if you do the top, the axle is traveling this way, and it could uh, cause <coughs> openings and get dirt and grime and all that crap. And if you do it at the bottom, it could do the same thing, but then you could also leak. Um, so I'm going to do it in the back. To I don't know, not that there's much wind in here, but there could you know get grime and stuff coming in from the front. I think the best option would be the back. But you got these little tiny uh, Phillips screws and washers and nuts and stuff. And these clamps I'm not loving. I didn't know this how it was set up, but it's a little tool that you gotta use to really cinch it down. I'm not too happy about that. Um, but whatever, I'm gonna make it work. I gotta go buy another tool that I'll never use and whatever. Alright. Alright, so I got all my bolts in. Um man, you know, I probably need to get these nuts a little bit tighter but I don't want it to get too tight because it's gonna squeeze and uh, cause it to break seal. Um, I ended up using other clamps that I already had. I didn't like the clamps that came with. Um, make sure those are pretty tight, definitely make sure they don't move, you know, if you can push them and stuff. Make sure that this is seated all the way back. And I would probably push this, not, not far, but kind of push on this before you actually uh, tighten it up. Um, just kind of give it a little bit more wiggle room. But again, same thing, don't, shouldn't be able to, to uh, rotate. Um, true test is when you uh, fill this sucker up with fluid, it's definitely going to uh, tell you, especially after running a little bit, getting hot, cold, hot, cold. It's going to tell you whether or not you're going to have to uh, tighten those up more. But uh, for now, you know, I might tighten these just a little bit more. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it the, the way it is. All right. Alright, so now you're going to put this piece in bell side in and gently tap it into place with your bearing in, uh, which is tight fit, but just make sure you only tap in the center. <clears throat> Alright, so I've already gone ahead and did a couple things that didn't want to bore you. So this whole back and plate uh, bought from aircooled.net, uh, it came all together, uh, I think it was $75. Um, I'll go through some of the steps to make sure that it is adjusted correctly, but we'll do that later. So, uh, back and plate on by itself. Then I've got my gasket that I put Aviation Permatex on. I use this stuff, um, but you can use other stuff. I just wouldn't go with anything too thick. Um, but then I've also got my washer right here. I'm going to go all the way back. I've got my O-ring. I'm going to go all the way back as well. And then this spacer right here, you can see how it's beveled on the inside. Uh, beveled is going to go against the washer. Um, and then I'm going to lube up the other washer. And it's going to go around the bearing right there. And then I'm going to put my cup on. And this specific cup you got a little tip at the bottom. It's going to go on like that. So let me lube this washer or lube this uh, o ring up and then I'll come back. Alright, so I've lubed up my o ring. Put it on very gently. This uh, back of plate seemed to want to keep coming off. Make sure it's all the way around. Um, I've already replaced my seal right here. I've already replaced the seal. Uh, you know, I just pushed it out with a screwdriver 
and then pushed it in by hand and gently typed it in to where it was even with the top of this one. There's different designs for these guys, bearing caps, bearing cups. Um, this is how mine looks. So I got a lube up kind of the inside of here as well and just spread it around to where, oh, that's not where I want to lube it at all. Um, spread around the outside as well right here. So. But once I get that on, uh, so the gasket too, there's a little hole on the bottom. For this model, it doesn't make a dang difference. I mean, I'd still put it at the bottom, but yeah, for this model, there's there's normally a, uh, on the bottom of this bearing cap, there's a hole for it, uh, but this doesn't have it. Put this guy on and make sure that when you put it on, you're not pinching that big O-ring You'll feel it. Just do it by hand. All right, so we're good. Um, then we're going to put our hardware in. These guys are torqued to 33 foot-pounds. Uh, not a lot, but a decent amount. Um, just do... Store pattern, you know, torque top right, bottom left, you know, don't do side to side. Or I would say suggest not going side to side. But uh, I'm going to torch 32 foot pounds and then um, I'll come back. All right, so now that we've got that all on, um, obviously you want to connect your brake line um, in the bag for the fluid, the one for the food line. And then this one came with a brand new uh, bleeder valve. Make sure that one's. Uh, semi-tight I mean don't get crazy with it. it's a pretty small thread but um, one thing I want to go over real quick is this is how you adjust it right so you put on the drum right here and you put it on until it seats all the way back um, and you turn it okay hey it's free okay that's step one step two from the back side with the drum still on there's a hole right here if you can see my finger yep um, you're gonna turn these guys until the rotor or the sorry ha, the drum does not turn anymore and then back it off a couple turns until you can no longer feel any drag um, and that's how you would adjust it so uh, oh man but also too you've got your you've got this plate right here I don't know where my old one went but uh, the parking brake cable is going to go through the hole. I'll go ahead and install it and uh, show you guys that in a second. But uh, you obviously want to make sure you do that before you put your hub on your uh, drum. All right, so a little bit of paint. Um, obviously, this will be a little bit tighter when you adjust your handbrake. Um, that's another thing, too. When you go to adjust your handbrake, just make sure that uh, when it is off, that the rotor still spins. I'd probably do that. Um, before you start installing the tires and stuff and putting it on the ground, that just that way you can better fill it. But this is how that bracket's going to look when it's in. Kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. And then you have that washer right here. Or sorry, the bolt. <coughs> just tighten it down. Um, yeah. And so now I'm going to put the hub on, or the, uh, the drum on, and then adjust the brakes to where that they don't rub, but they're, uh, you know, obviously tight. All right, so uh, put the tire on there. This thing's dirty as all crap. Um, so yeah, like I said, make sure you adjust your handbrake as well. Might as well while it's uh, up. But uh, also too, when you go to torque this thing, one method, especially if you don't have anything, is you hold the uh, drum. Like they sell tools out there that kind of connect to two of the um, holes for the uh, lug bolts. Uh, and it prevents it from turning and you can torque it like that. But one way you can do it is just snug it up as much as you can with the tire on. Um, then obviously snug your uh, lug nuts up um, as much as you can and then drop it to the ground or at least put a little bit of a uh, pressure, uh, lower it. And then torque this guy to 250 foot-pounds. But you just want to make sure that 
when you do have it torqued that you're able to get cotter pin alignment. It's kind of important. Uh, but yeah. All right, if you've got any questions, uh, just let me know. Uh, comment. Please like the video and subscribe. Thanks.